This over here is the Dell XPS 16, the latest model right now, and it can be very, very expensive. Over 3,000, some of them $4,000. I mean, that is a premium price. But before buying this for you as a creator, because that is the best creator laptop that Dell can offer the XPS line, the balls to the wall kind of model, there's a few things that you should know and some of the things I've discovered after using this. So I'd recommend watching this before buying this laptop and perhaps making some configurational changes before you're buying this. Let's go. This part of the video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly. Improve your CPU and GPU cooling with their Cryonaut Thermal Paste or the Cryonaut Extreme for the Extreme Overclockers. If you're on the Intel LGA1700 platform, check out their contact frame that prevents CPU bending. And for the curious PC enthusiast, you might wanna check out the Wireview Pro. For all your high performance cooling solutions, check out Thermal Grizzly in the video description below. Number one first thing that I like to talk about is the actual build quality. This is probably the best build quality laptop that I have ever experienced on the channel. And that meaning Windows laptop quality. It's all metal, everything feels solid. There's no like screen flex. There's no chassis keyboard flex. All the edges, everything is smart, minimalistic, beautiful colors. I mean, look at the design even on inside. It's absolutely amazing. Next in no particular order, good or bad sides, the keyboard, the spacing is a little bit odd. When I've been trying to type in here, I've often found myself missing the keys. They have made a very nice minimalistic choice of like actually edging the keys to each other compared to like the Inspirion or some of the other laptops where you have a little space in between. So the keys are bigger, but for some reason I'm finding myself actually missing the keys a lot more or hitting the wrong key there. There's nice big enter in there, but for 16 inch, I like this is minimalistic. I know they've gone like kind of the Apple route, but I really want a numpad somehow as well, if possible. And when typing on it, the keyboard travel and the way this is, they're kind of silent. Can you hear this? It feels very premium, expensive typing experience, and there's no like keyboard flex, almost non-existent. Gives it a very solid kind of bottom base that you're typing into. Then the touchpad, and this was what I wasn't sure at first. Like seeing this, you're like, where is the touchpad? And it's somewhere here. It's actually very large. The interesting thing is when actually using this, your brain just automatically just goes there to do this. And I've never once missed like the touchpad where I've tried to do something in there or something in there. You always actually find it in there. It's absolutely no problem. And I like that there's no kind of an edge in there. So you can just easily smooth in and you're just going all around the place. The touchpad is actually one of the best I have had in Windows laptops 2024, full stop. It is amazing. It's haptic, the feedback, everything is truly amazing. The way it works is like Apple as good as you can get. That's like as good of a compliment for Windows laptop as you can get Apple like. Let's talk about the performance. This is where things get a little bit interesting. I spent a long time and even discussing this with some of my other YouTuber friends like what was Dell thinking when they made this laptop? Because there is nothing like this laptop. It's kind of like on in its own league in a weird and good and bad way as well. It kind of doesn't want to compete with anybody and tries to be an alternative for people who looking maybe a Windows alternative to Mac. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. And this laptop is linked in the description below. I'm gonna leave the 32 and 64 gigabytes version in there. Highly recommend going for the 64 gigabytes. Just go check them out, the latest pricing, because there's always deals on, so you don't wanna miss them or you don't wanna pay more just because you can uh, check out some deals in the description below. One of the main things Dell has done here is the performance, whether plugged in or unplugged, is very, very similar. It's not exactly the same. You do get a slightly more performance when plugged in, but it's not like amazingly different what you see usually on other competitor laptops where you plug it in and suddenly you get like 50% more performance or something like that on a GPU or CPU, something like that. Not on this one. It kind of pulls the same and tries to keep it the same, which is kind of the Apple approach, you know, where you have it plugged in or not plugged in, it just performs the same, which is nice. But at the same time, I feel like Dell has lowered the bar 
to a wrong place because the actual plugged in performance is now suddenly a lot lower than some of the other laptops or other competition because they offer so much more when you're plugged in and roughly about the same when you're on battery power. So Dell has kind of matched the battery power, but just not given us as much on the plugged in performance, which kind of just makes me like, hmm, what's going on in here? Probably because of the charger, but kind of an interesting discovery when doing this. Highly recommend checking out the video editing timeline performance and the actual like performance review compared to some of the other competitors like the Asus Pro at P16, because then you'll see like what's going on in there. Regarding the GPU, they have massively starved a GPU of juice, and this GPU actually is underperforming some of the 4060s. So this is a 4070. Some of the 4060s and some of the other laptops are actually better. So the GPU doesn't get enough juice, which is interesting. The other thing is the RAM. Now the RAM is very, very good, very fast, but it's soldered on. You can't change it. And when getting this, please highly recommend getting 64 gigabytes. Just max it out, whatever you do, even when going with 4060, just max it out. And that brings me to an interesting point. When you would buy this laptop, I would suggest and recommend not getting the 4070 version but the 4060 just because the performance is not that different and if they push that much more power on the 4060 maybe go with the 4060 save some money and have more ram because that will give you a better performance unless you're on 3d performance then the 4070 obviously makes a little bit more sense it's definitely worth considering when talking about the chargers what i have here is dell xps charger and then on the right we have the inspirion charger both of them usb type c and one of them is a little bit bigger now the thing is if i look at the end of the inspirion can you see here we have the whether the power plug on is on the actual cable which is so much nicer than having it on the brick so i've just turned it off so there's a little bit more juice here on the capacitors can you see this light is still on in here but let's see that one's gone off now so the inspirion charger is bigger but the light is kind of in a better place i don't think this is as good it's nice that dell has made it smaller for the xps line but then why make these two separate chargers i bet there's been an older charger that they still like ship with some of the lower end models and this is the newer one that they give with the bigger ones but 130 watts usb type c you know I, I want some more power they should have figured out a usb type c that gives 200 watts power because that that price point i'm sure you can include that in the price then talking about the io apple kind of like approach but i'd say not as good in some of the ways so you have two thunderbolt 4 ports on the left side and then one type c on the right side headphone combo jack and the micro sd card slot so i've got a few things that i'm not happy with at this price point this sd card slot this is a micro sd card slot should be full size because the full size you can always kind of adapt to the small one but the small one you can't do the full size so you have to have a dongle with you then there's no usb type a you have to have the dongle that dell has in the packet you're gonna have to carry that with you as well which is interesting also if you've got an rtx 4070 model like i have over here the one on the right here is not thunderbolt 4. if you've got the lower end gpu 4060 then the right side is thunderbolt 4 as well what's going on pay more to get less dell what what that i'm like not happy about even though this is usb 3.2 gen 2 10 gigabits in speed it does offer uh, display pass through but it's not the full speed why is it not suddenly thunderbolt 4 when we have 4070 hmm? why I don't know. Then the screen. Oh man, Dell, thank you very much. This is one of the best things that they have done. This screen is absolutely amazing. This is a 16 inch, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 90 Hertz OLED. For creator, mwah, it's touchscreen as well. I love that it is the touchscreen. Having the touchscreen is actually really, really nice. When you're doing some typing or filling out forms or doing some other things or installing, when having the touchscreen option is just so good. I'm liking that they did it. It is fantastic, absolutely amazing. It's color accurate. It's got all the bells and whistles. Like it's one of the best in the class. I would say that Dell has actually outperformed the ProArt P16, which which is you know fully for creators because they have 90 hertz it doesn't go as bright but the 90 hertz makes all your working and what you're doing with the screen much more fluent and feels more just a bit more snappier and not as kind of slow and stuttery just gives a much nicer user experience whatever you're doing even when just moving the cursor around the screen if that makes sense it's 10 bit as well so for creators if you are doing any creative work you get a full 10 bit color space in here it's truly a class leading experience on the screen it's amazing the speakers are very nice as well i think the pro art though if you go have a look at the pro art versus this like side by side <laughs> I 
found the speakers are actually really, really loud. I'd recommend like turning them slightly down because at full volume, there is a little bit of like the highs are clipping or distorting or makes a bit of a funny rattling sound. I don't know if it's just my model, but that's what I've experienced. And the last thing is battery life. I wouldn't say it's fantastic, but uh, they have packed as much in there as possible. 99.5 watt hours, 100 is the limit what you can carry on the airplane. So they've put as much in there as possible. Now, because of that, this guy is actually rather heavy. It's one of the heaviest laptops that you can carry around. It is very high quality, but it's almost like Rolls or Bentley that is just heavy. When using the battery, it's, it's okay. I wouldn't say that this is like, wow, amazing, because it does pack quite a lot of performance. Intercore Ultra here actually helps with the battery life, but it's nothing amazing. Apple would absolutely smoke this guy. So if you're looking for Apple kind of battery life, it's not in here. At the same time, if you're looking for 3D performance, this guy will smoke Apple. So thanks guys for watching. Check this out in the video description below. And if you haven't yet, consider subscribing, like the video, it actually makes a difference. And I'll see you in the next video. There's also some build guides in the description below if you want to check them out if you're not interested in laptops.